Hey there and welcome back to South Park The Stick of Truth. My name is Pete and today we complete two more side quests including the Man by Pig storyline and we will also have to make our decision between elves and humans in the game's main quest. As you can see I have slightly changed our equipment as we now wear the Justice Cap which gives us another minor power point boost. I have also reworked the armor patches a bit but we'll talk about that in a moment. Right now we're off to the church to complete the Man by Pig quest line. I didn't really talk much about this in the last episode, but while we were with the PTA we received this message. Here we have Al Gore telling us that Manbapig is indeed attacking the church and if we now head over to the top left of the area here, we can now see something or rather someone who looks suspiciously familiar. Now since Manbapig or rather Al Gore in disguise is heavily armored and has a lot of health, we will start things off with the circumcised ability. This will cut our opponent's armor value in half and give us a much easier time going forward. Now we also have Kenny with us in this episode and that is no accident as we want to start things off with his charm ability here to inflict an attack down status effect. Because Mamba Pig's attacks can be quite brutal and this right here takes away a bit of their hitting power. Up next we then go with one of Kenny's special abilities, the Unicorn Stampede. Alright, that's a nice amount of damage here and just like the Circumcise ability, the Unicorn Stampede inflicts a stack of bleeding, which in turn will inflict damage over time and with a health pool as large as Manba Pigs, that is something very useful to have. Now we will immediately go with the Circumcise again and that costs us an additional 10 power points, but don't worry, we will get those back in a moment. Manba Pigs armor value is now halved once more and he has now 3 stacks of bleeding, but Kenny and his bow still don't have that much of an effect on him. Now the Manba Pig Rampage attacks 3 times and we only block once, but Kenny survives and now the Manba Pig Helmet comes off. That helmet provided some extra protection and now that it's off we can do a bit more damage. And we'll do so with a hard hitting melee attack, not only doing 700 hit points of damage, but also inflicting extra fire damage, slowing down a target and weakening his defenses. And because the number of negative status debuffs on Manba Pig is not enough already, we will also add Grossed Out now with Kenny's Royal Kiss ability. The following melee attack is blocked leaving Kenny just barely alive, while Man by Pick himself loses almost 900 hit points to negative status effects. And after a few moments of hesitation we then strip away another 800 with my favorite ability so far, the Sling of David. Now you may have noticed that we didn't heal Kenny and that has a reason, because without PP he's not really all that useful, so let's exchange him for a more hard hitting companion in Butters. And because Manba Pig is slowed down we are immediately up again and I want you to watch our PP bar as we now go for a ranged attack. As you can see we gain 2 PP for every throw of the broken bottle, refilling our bar with a sizable portion of power points. And that is due to an armor patch that I have put on, which works very nicely with ranged weapons that you can fire multiple times. Butter's Hammer of Justice deals another 800 points of damage, bringing Manba Pig down to critical levels who then runs off screen to grab his helmet again. He then strikes again with Cry of the Manba Pig, however the regeneration effect is beaten out by our damage over time abilities and with that Manba Pig goes down. This now completes the Defeat Manba Pig quest and with that marks the finale to Al Gore's Manba Pig questline. Off of the body we can loot the Manba Pig claw melee weapon and with that we now have all but 4 of the available 20 side quests in the game completed and we are just about to begin another one. Look, I got Nazi zombies to deal with. Most of my men are dead and the mayor's breathing down my neck. Whatever you want it'll have to wait. Hey, wait, you look pretty tough. How would you like to see what it's like to be a real police officer, huh? Kill some bad guys? Okay, kid. All you gotta do is kill a bunch of Nazi zombies and bring me the rings off their fat German sausage fingers. You get enough rings, I'll see about getting you an honorary job on the force. Alright, new quest and for this one we want to switch buddies and we'll go with Stan who's very useful against smaller groups of enemies. And with him by our side we will trigger the first fight against Nazi zombie group number one of five. 
Now I will slightly speed things up here, fighting these Nazi zombies is not all that difficult. They are somewhat armored and have decent health pools, but as we just saw with Manba Pig, at this point in the game 1000 hit points can disappear very very quickly. One more thing that we do accomplish in this fight is to get ourselves two more perfectly timed blocks, getting our total up to 99 and leaving us just one perfectly timed block shy of the skilled defender achievement. This fight however ends here with a melee attack, leaving the achievement still open for grabs in the next one. After the fight we are rewarded with the usual experience points and loot, but for the stay down achievement we will proceed to fart on every single corpse during this side quest. Whoa, dude. This achievement requires us to fart on 10 enemy corpses after they have been defeated in combat, which is of course something you can also do very early on in the game, and I believe we could have unlocked this achievement as early as episode 1 or 2, but instead we'll do it now, the only thing that matters is that we eventually complete it. Now actually finding groups of Nazi zombies for this side quest can be a bit tricky, but I have found that the areas around the school, the church and Stark spawn generally give you something to work with. I am Stan Marshwalker, brother of wolves and badgers. I got extremely lucky in this side quest and managed to find the five groups very quickly, but be warned that this can take a while longer. Our next enemy is all on his own and therefore quickly defeated, earning us experience points, the second of five Nazi rings, and already the fourth corpse to fart on. Is it true you made an alliance with the goth kids? We continue on to the right and immediately find another group in the community center parking lot, this one consisting of two enemies. This is getting out of hand. After the sling of David, Stan uses the Discus of Might ability, a bouncing ranged attack that hits both enemies for medium damage, good enough to take out one of them immediately and leave the other one with just a tiny amount of hit points. Now I failed to block here to get the skilled defender achievement, but at least we now have the third of five groups already defeated. That could have sucked a lot worse. Once again we get experience points and loot, as well as the third ring and farts number five and six. That leaves only four more to go and with two groups of enemies remaining, we should hopefully be able to unlock the achievement in just a few moments. Now we backtrack and return to where we came from, and while we don't find anyone else in front of the school, we are a bit more successful around Stark's Pond. We know we're gonna win, can we skip this? Now once again we have two enemies against us here, which works well in our favor for the stay down achievement, and also lets us start this fight off exactly like the last one, with a combo of Sling of David and Discus of Might. We also finally managed to get perfectly timed block number 100 in this fight, unlocking the skilled defender achievement and finally getting rid of some tedious editing work for me. Once again we can get experience points, loot and farts, and let's not overlook the second enemy here who's lying a bit farther down the path. Now only one more group of Nazi zombies remains for the quest, and this one should have at least two enemies to complete the stay down achievement during the quest line. however if it doesn't then we can simply unlock the achievement with the next group of enemies we fight. Uh, by the way, since we just passed by we cannot fart on Manba Pig's corpse, that one does not react to being farted on, and I presume it therefore also does not count towards the achievement. Now we don't find any new Nazi zombies in front of the police station, but there is another location close by that we haven't checked yet, and that would be the small park next to City Hall. Fresh meat for my trusty wolf companion. Once again it's two enemies against us, so our tactics don't change much. We start things off with Sling of David and Discus of Might, before the last remaining enemy gets one quick attack in, that however does not affect us all that much, and we can swiftly land the killing blow. Here's now fart number 9 as well as the final Nazi ring, and here we have the 10th corpse to fart on, unlocking the stay down achievement. All we have to do now is to return to Sergeant Yates at the police station and turn in the quest. Hey Big Nose, you should consider having some work done. That's a nice collection of Nazi rings you got there. Well done, junior detective. Oh, 
Alright, and that's it. One more side quest completed, leaving only three more to go for the entirety of the game, two of which we have already started, and one of them is already at a stage where we can turn it in. And that is actually what we're about to do next, along with our decision on who to help in the quest to get the Stick of Truth back. And also, thanks to your comments, I have decided to help out the elves instead of Cartman's humans. Helping out Kyle, Stan and the Elven Kingdom just seems to be the right choice at this point, especially if we consider that Cartman might just be using us. Before we continue the main quest line, however, let's quickly turn in the Restoring the Balance side quest. Our territory is restored. I am honored to friend you, Dragonborn. Wonderful, not only do we get another friend request, but we also level up to level 11, allowing us to once more upgrade our abilities. And we could now spend one point on the Whirling Doom ability, but we have also opened up the first upgrade slot for the Plagues of Egypt ability. However, we don't have to make the tough decision between the two abilities, as with now four upgrade points saved, we can simply spend one on each. And now I think it's time that we talk to Kyle and tell him that we are ready to support the Elven Kingdom and that we are willing to recruit the Goth kids to their cause instead of Cartman's. A Twitter raven has told me of your success in recruiting another faction. Simply call them here and your dedication to the Trial will be complete. Climb up into the treehouse and summon your allies. No tricks, human. New kid, I'm sorry I ever doubted you. I hereby make you a member of the Drow Elves of the Forest. Yay! New kid, you have our friendship. I hereby level you up to the rank of Commander. My lord, my lord! We know where the humans are hiding the stick. What, really? We just intercepted their messages on Twitter. Ah, you shot down their message, Raven. Right, right, we shot down their Raven. And the evil Wizard King has hidden the stick inside his desk at school. Dude, of course! Carmen hid it in his desk! Drowls of the forest! We know where the humans are hiding the stick! I knew Carmen was cheating! We shall march on the school and make the hallway strip of their blood! <laughs> Defenders of freedom! We thank you for your courage in joining our fight! Tonight, we are no longer elves or goths! Tonight, we fight as one! I feel like such a homo sapien right now. The elves are here! They have blown their war horn! Blow our skin! Okay. Elves, flank left! Goth kids, prepare to attack from behind! The front's barricaded! Commander Douchebag, see if you can get in through the side entrance and take out their defenses from behind! Alright, here we are attacking the school on the side of the elves. And with our recent promotion to commander, we have received another set of equipment for the Jew class. One of the new items is the level 7 Holy Lance melee weapon. This is an interesting weapon, however one that is definitely outperformed by the level 11 Manba Pick Claw. So let's put some fire damage on the Manba Pick Claw and equip that one instead. We are now also wearing the Holy Fedora as our headwear, which restores 2 PP every time we take damage and is therefore very, very useful. And I would actually argue that it is a bit more useful than the Justice Cap that we had equipped before, so let's quickly transfer the weapon patch to the Fedora, which we will keep equipped. One thing that we will not keep equipped, however, are the level 7 Holy Robes, simply because they're only really of use once we have taken negative status debuffs. Since those don't happen all that often, I have instead decided to stick with the goth clothing, simply because it has two upgrade slots instead of one, allowing for greater customization and a nice boost to our ranged attacks. Last but not least, we get the level 7 Holy Ring, and we will keep this one equipped as well, because plus 50 Holy damage on perfect attacks is very useful to have. We will, however, upgrade it with a weapon patch that adds 15 armor. And equipped like this, we are now ready to attack the school. And since the front entry is blocked, there is only one way to go, and that is through the back. Here, the goth kids have already done a good job and defeated all enemies in the area, so we can simply focus on the loot. You're, where is the command, my lord? We kicked all their asses and cleared the way for you. Have at it, hobbit. Now, since the stairway is blocked, we can't get up to the door. That is, unless Jimmy opens up the accessible entrance. Open sesame. And with that opened, we can sneak into the back and begin our attack. Attention, Elf King! 
The building has been fortified, and the armies of Christ shall never surrender. You will all die in this place. Now we start things off in the kitchen, where we can loot a cupboard and the backpack, and where we can also blow up a stove to access Jin Pokemon number 23. There is also another body to loot on the left side here, but that is also all we can do in the kitchen, so let's proceed to the next area. Wow, what a mess! Those humans went crazy apples in here! Have you ever heard my impression of Chef? Well, hello there, children. Uh, hello, children. Wow, what a fantastic companion. The walls are too strong. We've lost hundreds of men already. Alright, a bit more loot, including Chef's old P.O. box key. And right here we can continue to loot the elven bodies that have already fallen in this area. The things of importance here are number one, the basketball melee weapon on the right side here, the loot behind the chalkboard here, which gives us a level 7 flame patch, and then last but not least, the lunchbox in the previously inaccessible part of the room that we came through. Now we have a group of enemies in front of us, but we're not going to take them on in a fair fight. Instead, we want to sneak through the vent here, and then, once we're on the other side, fire a well-placed shot at the water pipe. This now creates a nice big puddle that we can use to electrocute two of the three enemies. And enemy number three is then so frightened that he doesn't even put up a fight. And we now earn the full amount of experience points for defeating these enemies, as well as the opportunity to loot their bodies. However, only the last one here holds something of importance with the level 7 boxing badge. Now the next group of enemies has barricaded themselves off, and no, we cannot go through the ventilation to get the drop on them from above. What we can do, however, is to use our couple spell ability to make quick use of the barricade, and also eliminate one of the three guys behind it in the process. This does, however, leave two more of them that we can't get past without a fight. Since the group against us is fairly small, we will start things off with the Sling of David, which almost kills one enemy, but sadly then bounces off the wrong one. Up next, to keep both enemies at bay, Jimmy will present us with a small song. Sleep now, the whippoorwills are dancing. Gently now, put your mind to rest. Wow, what a terrific audience. Now that we have only two enemies left, we once again go for the Sling of David, and that reduces the group in front of us to only one, however, that one still has shields. With Jimmy's crossbow, we then strip away the first layer, and with four throws from the broken bottle, we strip away the remaining one, and also inflict grossed out and five stacks of bleeding. Jimmy then uses the Power Cord ability to give the entire party a PP boost, which gives him enough PP to immediately sing his lullaby again. The enemy falls asleep and loses almost 1600 hit points due to status effects, which leaves him easy enough for us to take care of. In terms of loot, the item that we don't want to miss is on the last enemy at the bottom, who holds the level 9 Necromancer Gloves. And with those in our possession, I think this right here is the perfect point for us to make the cut. Yes, we are in the middle of a quest, but this is a long one, and to be fair, the real fun hasn't started yet. And I would hate to make the cut midway through more important scenes, so let's make it right here and see how things progress in the next episode. As always, if you like this video, then please leave a thumbs up, and if you want to support the channel, then feel free to subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!